What happened is Davy and Ross, which they good buddies, okay? Mm -hmm. They 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 okay. Who? Both. Well, start Allen. You got 48 hours, white boy. If you got Ricky Rose money, ain't none of my niggas winning foreclosure. Come on, white boy. I'm finna bust a bottle, white boy. Don't do stunner like that. Things have been heating up in the world of hip-hop, and it's not looking good for one person in particular. For the past couple of days, fans have been glued to their screens, refreshing their feeds every minute as Drake and Rick Ross continue to tear each other up. Though Rick was doing a good job holding down the fortress, word on the street is that Drake's about to put him in his place by dropping the deets about what went down between him and Diddy in the bedroom. Just what happened? Why are these two men at it? And is Drake really sitting on Diddy and Rick Ross's freak-off footage? Let's find out. Getting slimy yet? We're just warming up. White boy. Wait, want it. If you want it, nigga, be, nigga, be about it. Leave it to Drake to give us some piping hot tea. Fans couldn't be busier, tracking everyone's jabs. It all started on April 13th, 2024, when Drake's song, Push Ups, Drop and Give Me 50, was leaked online. And honestly, fans see why he decided to keep this one in the vault. Each lyric was laced with mockery of some of the biggest names in the game, including Kendrick Lamar, The Weeknd, and Ja Morant. Given how problematic the song was, a lot of fans thought that the song was a product of AI. I mean, Drake wouldn't dare to poke several bears in one song now. Now, would he? Well, it turns out he had the balls to do exactly that. Live streamer DJ Academics confirmed the song as the real deal. He had received the track in its original form with different lyrics and production. So now that we've established the authenticity of the track, let's take a look at the bars Drakey was spitting. Through his shots at Kendrick for his short stature garnered some attention. The lyrics about Rick Ross were the real head turner. Drake started off small, bringing up the rapper's history as a correctional officer, saying, I might take your latest girl and cuff her like I'm Rick Ricky. But then he upped the ante when he name dropped Rick and Diddy, saying, Aren't you too old for this? Can't believe he jumping in. This man turning 50. Every song that made it on the chart, he got from Drizzy. Worry about whatever's going on with you. And looks like Drake was hinting at some shady stuff going down between the pair. Perhaps something to do with Diddy's recent legal troubles? You best believe that fans had a field day with it. Of course, with Drake's fiery track, Ross couldn't take the disrespect lying down. He came out with his own diss track titled Champagne Moments, a clear jab at Drake, whose Instagram handle is Champagne pain poppy. Ross accuses Drake of using ghostwriters and even made fun of the rapper for getting a nose job in lyrics like, you ain't never want to be a nigga anyway, nigga. That's why you had an operation to make your nose smaller than your father knows. He also sampled a clip of Drake saying Ross was his favorite to rap with on a song. But fans weren't too thrilled about Ross's response. They felt like he should have kept that track in the vault because Drake's got some serious dirt on him. One person commented, Drake's initial leak had a line about Diddy aimed at Ross. Drake took it out in the final version. I don't think Ross thought this through. But Ross was ready to play with fire. Following the release of the track, he took the beef to IG, spamming his feed with posts where he called Drake BBL Drizzy, referring to his alleged nose job. And what do you know? Drake wasn't about to bury the hatchet just yet. He posted a screenshot of a conversation with his mother where the two talk about Ross's accusation, particularly about the nose job. He also fired some shots by calling Rock angry and saying that Manjaro, a diabetes drug typically used for weight loss, is making him him loopy. Did Ross back off? Nope. At this point, the beef had turned into an all-out war with Rick taking the fight to X. He egged on Drake to say something, writing, drop a response or tell the kids you don't respond, followed by a slurry of posts on his socials. And to add to the drama, each post was tagged with BBL Drizzy. He stirred the pot once more on April 16th, 2024, by posting a video about Drake selling his last property in the United States, an $88 million luxurious mansion. And surprisingly, Drake was quick to respond to Rick's story in his DM saying, Imagine you having 88 million to spend on a crib. Your shits be steals like you got them from a police auction. Your Star Island house on a sliver of cheesecake. Your lot 4,000 square feet, my crib 4,000 square feet Leonard. And you put a wrap on your timeshare jet, that shit coming off when it's the other people turn to fly. He then called Ross a Brett Barish worker. The One Dance singer wrote, How many cases you gotta move before you gotta check finally? Shit prob took a lifetime to see some real bread. You're Brett's son, now you not Rose anymore. For those of you who didn't get it, Drake Drake was referencing the owner of Luke Belair, one of the beverages that Rick frequently promotes. And how did Ross respond to that? Well, watch it yourself. White boy, white boy, BBL Drizzy, I got a question. I saw you posted you got more money than Ricky Rose. And let's assume you did. Well, your best friend, Birdman, his house went in a foreclosure five years ago. You done watched that man struggle them five years and ain't get that man a mansion. Cause if you got more money than Rose, what's another 50 million, white boy? 
white boy. It's one for 40 on Indian Creek. It's one for 50 on Star Island. You got 48 hours, white boy, if you got Ricky Rose money. Ain't none of my went in foreclosure. Come on, white boy. I'm finna bust a bottle. White boy, don't do stunner like that. Come on, man. What happened to that? For context, Drake's longtime friend was forced to part ways with his Miami Beach mansion after failing to make mortgage payments. Birdman eventually ended up selling the mansion for the low price of $10.85 million, a whopping $5 million less than the original price of the sprawling property. It seemed like Ross wanted Drake to put his money where his mouth was while secretly boasting about how none of his MMG artists had been kicked to the curb. Towards the end of the video, Ross rubbed salt over Drake's wounds by bringing up his jet in the conversation. 48 hours, the countdown has begun. And that old ass jet you got, they gave it to you free. That's a 1978. Be safe on that, Drizzy. Be safe on that plane. That old motherfucker, God is great. And Rose kept twisting the knife where it hurt by posting several videos, bringing up the same accusation. Come on, white boy. Soon as you get in that trouble, ooh, I gotta go stand next to the niggas. Ooh, we just watched this on for a real time. See, see, white boy, I'm a different kind of nigga. I'm a different kind of nigga. Rose, nigga, I'm rich, nigga. I don't need you for a remix, white boy. I don't need you. All them other niggas want to tell you what I'm telling you. I'm saying it for all the niggas who ain't in my position. What happened to that crib? Come on, nah, we ain't getting... Interestingly, Drake didn't run away from the fight. He stepped in the ring and played Ross's game by posting an IG story where he poked fun at Ross's digs, writing, this shit the Miami starter pack you living in a content creator crib. And to no one's surprise, Ross wasn't about to move on just yet. He responded with yet another video. This time he egged on Drake to stop hiding behind IG captions and post a video. He also took shots at the rapper for hiring ghostwriters to do his work for him. He'll take a picture and post because he got ghost writers for his fucking captions. He got, listen to me, he got people sitting around, what's Rick gonna do next? Let's go, let's go, come up with it. Come on, BBL Drizzy, just pick your phone up and talk to the people. You okay? We know you may be shallow. We know, but everything fine. Everything's gonna be okay. Therapeutic. But Rick should watch what he asks for. Fans are currently waiting for the next diss in the fiery beef. Interestingly, a little birdie spilled the beans about Drake's next move. Apparently, he plans to drop a video of Diddy and Rick doing you know what? And if that felt like a splash of cold water in the face, well then boy do you have a lot to catch up on. For years, there have been rumors about Diddy sleeping around with men, and interestingly, Rick's name has popped up several times as one of the people that the music mogul has messed around with. In fact, 50 Cent dropped the ball on that one along long time ago. Back in the day, he posted two suggestive pictures of the pair, and boy does he know how to ruffle some feathers. One picture showed Diddy and Rick about to embrace each other on stage, while the second picture showed the pair dressed in pink shirts with Ross hugging Diddy from the back. 50 captioned the photos, I ain't saying nothing, but something ain't right, El Mao. However, it looks like 50 realized he was venturing into dangerous territory because he took down the post soon after, which isn't really like the G-Unit rapper. If you know 50, you'd know that he never really shies away from from saying the unexpected. If someone's got some dark secrets that the 21 Question singer catches a whiff of, you best believe he's gonna spill the tea in an interview. In fact, 50's taken shots at Diddy in the past for his sexuality. While promoting his film Den of Thieves back in the day, 50 sat down with The Breakfast Club where he had some interesting things to say about Diddy. Apparently, the music mogul had asked to take him shopping. Dude, like he said, he said something to me one time, a long time ago, at Chris Lighty's wedding, he told me to take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the f what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let me move, man, before I do something. You gonna make me mess up the wedding. Yes, you heard that right. 50 was shocked, to say the least. He straight up called Diddy Fruity for making that offer, and here's when things get interesting. Diddy later joined The Breakfast Club, where the interviewer seized the opportunity to ask him about the rumors fueled by 50, and his response was really something. What? You said, I like when you do it like that, daddy, <laughs> when you're scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't play games, y'all know. You know what I'm saying? I'm a grown man, I don't play games. I don't even think of no other man, man. Besides, if I'm thinking about another man, I'm thinking about uplifting. I'm not thinking about all that. All them gnats, you know, they, they can't really touch me. Y'all, at the end of the day, y'all see and y'all know what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the track record, y'all know the business acumen, y'all know the community service. 
Y'all know what I'm about, you know? Ten points for trying, but everyone and their grandma can see that he was simply throwing words together. In recent times, 50 dragged both Diddy and Rick's names through the dirt. This was when Diddy's name was trending every other day, given the increasing number of lawsuits against him. 50 added fuel to the fire yet again by posting Ross's questionable lyrics from his song U-O-E-N-O -E on his IG on December 6, 2023, which read, Put Molly all in her champagne, she ain't even know it. I took her home and I enjoyed that, she ain't even know it. And to make sure everyone knew what he was hinting at, 50 also posted a picture of Diddy and Rosé together, leaving nothing to the imagination. Interestingly, some fans brought up the rapper's controversial lyrics once again in light of Drake's new diss track. One person tweeted, On the leaked version of Drop and Gimme 50, Drake tells Ross, You better be worried about that shit you got with Diddy. If you remember that, you O-E-N-O-I-T Ross verse. It all makes now. This will age well later. That said, 50 and Diddy haven't exactly been BFFs. Back in the day, the two butted heads over rapper Maze's contract. 50 even went as far as accusing Diddy of playing a role in Biggie's passing. They did try to mend broken bridges over the years, but after seeing them fight in front of the cameras at the 2012 Bet Hip Hop Awards, it's safe to assume that you won't be catching these two in the same room anytime soon. Bearing that in mind, it might feel like 50's only taking shots at Diddy to bring him down, but that's not the case. Remember how we said that there have been speculations about Diddy's sexuality over the years? Yeah, well, it's ain't all because of 50. Apparently, his sexuality was one of the reasons reasons behind the long-standing beef between Diddy and broadcaster Wendy Williams. And let's not forget that in recent times, music producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones filed a lawsuit against him for inappropriate behavior. His 70-page lawsuit also delved into Diddy's alleged relationship with other men. One passage from the lawsuit read, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in physical relations with rapper, redacted, R&B singer 6, redacted, and Stevie J. The footnote for 5 reads, he is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Meanwhile, the footnote for Six referred to someone who performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. Internet detectives used these clues to narrow it down to two names, Meek Mills and Usher. And guess what? Meek Mills is already in the trenches with an alleged video of him and Diddy making rounds on the internet. As for whether Rick Ross has been corrupted by Diddy or not, well, fans believe the answer to that question is a big fat yes. You see, Diddy's lately been a hot topic in online communities with the truth about his wild parties coming to light. For years, the record executives' parties had been viewed as these exclusive events where celebrities could fulfill their darkest desires. According to some industry sources, Diddy would use these parties as a cover-up to carry out dark rituals, one where he would exploit younger artists in the industry, along with his group of powerful friends, for his own pleasure. And interestingly, Rick seems to have a similar way of partying. Back in 2023, South Fulton, Georgia residents were ready to burn Ross at the stake when they learned he'd be hosting a star-studded car show at his home in Fayetteville, Georgia. 6,000 people were expected to attend the show, making it the event of the year. But for Ross's neighbors, it was a living nightmare waiting to unfold. Some neighbors who live near famous rapper Rick Ross say they're going to go on vacation if he's allowed to hold another car and bike show on his property. Homeowners took their concerns to the Fayette County Board of Commissioners, bringing up the aftermath of Ross's car show the year before. One resident told WSB-TV about the massive traffic jam, saying, We feel locked out. It took me 40 minutes to get out of my subdivision. While another reported suffering from major headaches due to the deafening noise levels, another neighbor told the new outlet, Some of our people already talking about going on vacation or going somewhere during that time because you can't get out or in. Looks like Diddy taught Ross well. In fact, let's bring up Jonathan Adi's interrogation video. For those of you who don't know, he's a male worker who claimed to have suffered severe mistreatment at Diddy's hands. While being questioned for shooting up the Trump National Doral Resort in 2018, Jonathan spilled some major tea about the music mogul, claiming that he was part of the bully, the black part of the Illuminati. One particular moment that stands out is when Jonathan name-dropped Ross, claiming that he and Diddy were both gay. What happened is Davis and Ross was the good buddies, okay? Mm -hmm. They they they're gay. Who? Both. And now, before you brush off his claims as that of a crazy person, don't forget that Jonathan was talking about the freak-off sessions that involved Cassie long before she had filed a lawsuit. So maybe he was telling the truth after all about Diddy and Rick. To be fair, these two have always been tied at the hip. Diddy served as an executive producer for Ross's studio album, Mastermind. What's more, back in 2009, Diddy signed Rick Ross to his C-Rock entertainment management firm. But it's not merely a business relationship between the two. Back in 2010, Diddy said that his relationship 
with Ross wasn't merely on paper during an interview with Spliff TV, saying, We was in here one night, chopping it up, talking about these big plans. Doing a partnership, not just a management, doing a partnership, and I'm proud to announce that partnership. And he goes by the name of Rosi, Ricky Ross, the Teflon Don. We're gonna get a lot of money this year, you know, we see eye to eye, we got the same taste, we like fly things, he likes green, we like gold. And the love goes both ways, because here's what Ross had to say about Diddy. The experience and the knowledge that Diddy possesses is priceless. The relationships that he's accumulated over the last 20 years is priceless for a young artist such as myself. We developed a mutual friendship. We just stayed in contact. I was calling him for advice anyway. He was doing it for free. What you think about that, homie? Help me get this, homie. I need to meet for the Waka Flocka video, homie. He was doing so many different things for me on that level. At the end of the day, it's crystal clear that the two men are each other's rock in the industry. But based on music producer Lil Rod's experiences and what we know about Diddy, it's hard to rule out the possibility of Diddy possibly exploiting Rick and Ross agreeing to it for a seat at the table. As for fans, they're all for Drake dropping the ball on Rick Ross and Diddy. Some folks seem to think that Ross's desperate attempts to clap back at the rapper are nothing but a ruse to take away the public's attention from the facts. One person tweeted, Rick Ross trying to make the beef about him to distract us from being a Diddy affiliate. Meanwhile, another fan commented, Rick Ross needs to face his front and focus on accepting his bisexuality and not going down with Diddy. But what do you think of the situation? Do you think Rick Ross and Diddy really went at it? Will Drake drop the footage and turn around the tables? Let us know in the comments below.